Okay, so once you've um, got your normal map set up, you can actually use the uh, high poly model and the low poly model to uh, generate an ambient occlusion map. So the advantages of setting up an ambient occlusion map in this way is that you actually get ambient occlusion for your diffuse texture that has all the ambient occlusion for these high poly details. So if you just stay in X normal here, and we'll just change the name of our map to TA test AO for ambient occlusion. And if we tick on the ambient occlusion maps to render, um, we can actually keep the rest of our settings pretty much the same. Um, again, this is going to use the <coughs> cage that we set up before to shoot rays from every point on the cage until it hits geometry. So you need you can use the same cage you had before, but if you're making ambient occlusion, just make sure that that cage encompasses the entire high poly model. So then all you need to do is hit generate maps. And just let this generate. And just so I can actually show you an example, while um, that's being calculated, let's quickly uh, output a basic diffuse texture for this. So if we go to our some polygons menu and then open up the UV editor. And then we'll just do a snapshot from this. And I'm going to keep this in the uh, same folder that I've been uh, doing all of this X normal stuff in. And I'll just say this is a JPEG. Okay, so if we just check X normal, it's still calculating the uh, ambient occlusion, so it does take a bit longer than the um, than the normal map. So let's come into Photoshop. We can see we've still got our normal map open there. So we'll open up our UV image. In this we'll add a new layer and we'll just apply kind of a different colour to each thing. So you can see there I've gone to my magic wand tool, click on the, um, the black area outside and do select inverse and I often do select modify expand by one pixel just to make sure that my uh, texture doesn't have any of the UV borders in it. So I fill that in with this horrible purple colour I've got here. And I'll just turn this into a layer by double clicking and doing the OK. Drag this up and just set this to uh, lighten. Then I can see where my UVs are. So I'll quickly make another new layer. And then I'm just going to real quick, actually I'll do it like this. Hold control and click on my other layer. Hold alt to minus the select. And then just minus off, say, these ones here. I'm literally just going to apply a different colour in here as well, so something like that. Turn that off. Okay, so I've got my base diffuse map now. So now if I um, open my occlusion map. Control A and Control C on that and then paste that into there. And if I use darken on my multiply, sorry on my um, ambient occlusion layer, that will add in the occlusion Okay, so if we, I might just turn this down to about 50 opacity, 
and then do save as and that's my kind of base to fuse for now obviously you'd want a lot more detail in there but I just wanted to show you how to uh, use the ambient occlusion so obviously I'd save this as my TA test diff assign a new material to this In fact, we might as well apply a quick tech shader. If remember, if you're using a direct tech shader, you want to be in viewport 2.0, and uh, you need to make sure you have direct text 11 turned on in your plugins. So, tick on diffuse map. There's our diffuse assigned to our model, obviously with no bump at the moment. So we go back to our shader. If you scroll down, you'll see you've got a normal map here. And there's our normal map. Assigned to our model as well. It doesn't seem to have done a very good job here, and that's because it's actually the AO has picked up the fact that the uh, the bolts are sat on top of this. So probably what I'd want to do here is actually take that out of the ambient occlusion. Like so. Let us save over that. If it doesn't reload, oh, I'm on the normal app, that's fine. And there you have it, our diffuse map combined with an ambient occlusion map combined with a normal map.